Again, uh, issues that come up all the time. The, uh, is there an economic case for BEE? Well, yes, let me just respond quickly to the skills one. Just say that uh, skills is one of the priority elements that uh, in the scorecards uh, will have to be uh, complied with, otherwise you'll get a discount. Uh, but uh, I think Sandili had uh, the right point. Uh, we can't uh, say that BE is the solution to all of the challenges. Skills on its own is a major challenge. Every intervention we make in the manufacturing economy as DTI, we emphasize skills development, and we're involved in skills development ourselves as a department. So I can't uh, uh, but uh, agree uh, with the point about uh, skills. Just to say that um, <clears throat> the definition of black is, uh, uh, does include colored and Indian people. Uh, it's based on the fact that there was disadvantage during apartheid. The definitions under apartheid were the definitions of disadvantage, and therefore we're saying that people who were subject to discrimination on those grounds should be beneficiaries of, of BEE. Uh, and then also just to say that uh, uh, the economic case, uh, apart from the, the social equity case and the political case, I think is that uh, we simply cannot run an economy if we draw the skills and talents from only one part of our population. Mm -hmm. Skills and talents are, 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 are distributed randomly across our population, uh, and we have to deal with the factors that excluded people from leadership roles in the economy in the past. We have to deal with these positively if we're going to grow our economy. We've already seen some benefits uh, in the consumption uh, uh, sectors in particular uh, from empowerment, uh, but I think they also are relevant in the fact that we have skilled and talented people occupying much more senior positions uh, than they did some years ago, notwithstanding the major, major challenges that we still face in empowerment.